What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's that vlog time once again. Yes, that's right. This is episode 29 of our Let's Vape vlog series, and today is a very special day. It is Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to all you guys out there that celebrate. And today we're going to be doing something a little extra special. This is my best of 2017 vlog, where I'm going to be talking about everything that I loved this year and a few things that I didn't. So yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get started with this one here. Grab a cup of eggnog or a nice mug of hot cocoa. Grab your favorite vape, a comfy chair, sit back, relax, and let's vape. So how this all works is I must have bought, reviewed, or used these items in these categories in order to qualify for this list here. And I've broken it down into several different categories. So today we're going to start it off with the best regulated mod. I've got a couple of honorable mentions in each category, and then we're going to talk about the winner. So let's go ahead and kick it off with the best regulated mod I've used in 2017. I have a couple of honorable mentions for all these categories here, which we'll talk about first, and then we'll get to the winners. So starting off with the honorable mentions, for this category, which are the Vupu Drag Box. I absolutely love the Vupu Drag because it just hits hard, it fires up quick, the response rate is excellent, and it's a nice, solid mod. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to try out one of the resin versions, but I do have the original, and that thing is absolutely 100% rock solid. I really still will recommend them to my friends and everyone else that wants to know what a good mod is. If you're looking for a dual 18650 regulated device, then absolutely check out the Vupu Drag. Uh, it just sticks out in my mind as one of the better devices I've tried out this year. I mean, I've tried out so many different dual 18650 mods, but this one really, really stands out. And my second honorable mention is the iJoy Captain PD270. I mean, this thing, what can I say? It's a powerhouse, it's a workhorse, it's a beast, it's a brick, it's heavy, it's big, but you know what? At the end of the day, I absolutely love this thing, and I will continue to use this for a very long time. I, I just, I don't know. I really like the look and feel of it. It kind of fits my hand. I've got pretty big hands and it just, it works for me. So uh, the dual 2700 thing is definitely a bonus for me. I think that is just an excellent way to, uh, you know, get better battery life and not add a lot of bulk to your devices. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the winner of this category. Uh, for the winner of this one, I chose the Hexome V3. I bought myself my first ever Hexome earlier this year. Um, I want to say, March or something like that at National Vape Expo in uh, Connecticut and Foxwoods. And ever since then, I've been using it on a pretty much daily basis. Honestly, it's lived in my vape bag forever. <laughs> it just stays there. Whether or not I pull it out and use it for the day, it's still there on me at pretty much all times. So it's one of the most rock solid, one of the best, hardest hitting devices I own. Uh, it's lifetime warranted, and the people that work for Craving Vapor are amazing. Uh, big shout out to John and Teddy and the rest of the gang at over at Craving. Super awesome guys, absolutely love them, and I really can't wait until the next time I get to hang out with them. But yeah, the Hexome V3 is just one of my all-time favorite devices, and I mean, that's talking about everything I've ever used. The Hexome V3 is just one of the best devices on the market, in my opinion. And for our next category, we have the best mechanical device. Now, squonkers are excluded from this one. We have a totally separate category for that, so you'll just have to wait till later for those. Anyways, uh, yeah, 2017 was not really a big year for mech devices for me. I really haven't taken a look at too many of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it, the, that's all about, but uh, I'm starting to get back into mechs a little bit. I have a couple uh, that I'm planning on taking a look at in the near future, but we'll talk about that and maybe in next week vlog. But anyways, yeah, uh, the honorable mentions I have are the Coil Art Mage Mech. I think it's a pretty darn decent kit for the money. You know, I I would put that on parallel with the V-God. I think it's what the V-God Elite. I don't own one myself, but I've heard so many people compare the two. But the Mage Mech is just a really good, you know, solid device. It's well made. Uh, the machining's pretty good. For a Chinese made mech, I think they did a pretty, pretty decent job with that one. 
one. Uh, the other one that I had to mention was the uh, RX Machina by Wizmec, another really good Chinese-made mech mod. Um, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it does have some innovation in there, and I really want to see them expand on that. And that one, of course, is the 2700 battery. I think the future of mech technology lies in the hands of the 2700 battery or the 21700, blah, 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 blah. We'll talk about that another day. But uh, I really do love the 2700 mechs. Um, so uh, the winner that I have picked out is an American company. Uh, in fact, they're called Vaping American Made Products, and that's the Rig V3. Rig, I mean, what can I say? It's a rig mod. They are trustworthy. They are big, powerful mods. You, they're heavy. They're kind of bulky a little bit, but they're very plain and simple at the same time. They're not overly flashy and they're not overly expensive. It's just the everyday working man sort of mod, and I absolutely love that. The V3 for me definitely sticks out in my mind just because I know that if I have an issue with it, I can contact their customer service, and I like being able to send it back and, you know, actually talk to someone about my device if I do have an issue with it or if I need spare parts or anything like that. They are really good over there at uh, Vape Amp. So big shout out to Vape Amp and all, the whole crew over there as well. But yeah, the Rig V3 is definitely a nice mod. If you want just a good, simple mech mod, you don't want any frills or anything like that, and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on a mech mod, then there you go. Rig V3 is my choice. My third category is the best squonk mod of 2017. Again, I don't really have all that much to talk about. I'm not a huge squonker. I'm more of a dripper guy myself. You know, it's fun testing these devices out and they are pretty decent. Um, you know, I'm starting to kind of grow into it a little bit, I guess, but I'm definitely not drinking the Kool-Aid on the whole squonking thing. With that, a couple of honorable mentions real quick. We've got the Stentorian Vapor Ram Box Mod. It was one of those ones where it looks really, really pretty. It performs decently and I really have no major issues with it. It was a good little squonk mod and uh, now that I have a, a proper squonk refill bottle I feel like I'm probably going to be squonking a bit more uh, because it's a little bit easier. I really just hated taking the little bottle out and refilling it and you know they do have those uh, like 8, 10 mil whatever uh, bottles on the bottom and that is pretty convenient but I am a hardcore dripper. I like a lot of vapor production and I tend to go through juice pretty quick so I'm still filling a squonk bottle about four or five times a day. So anyways, I'm rambling here. I'll get on to my next honorable mention, which is the Watofo Nudge. Uh, I've only been testing this one out for a couple of weeks, but so far so good with this one here. I was a little bit sketched out by that whole fuse thing on the inside, but we'll talk about that in the full review. Um, but yeah, again, it was just kind of the same old thing as the uh, Ram Box mod. It's just a good, solid, basic, kind of easy to use little kit, you know? Um, it's just a decent device, and uh, that's why it gets an honorable mention from me. And moving on to the winner, it's of course the Pulse BF. I mean, how can you not mention the Pulse BF in a squonk category? Of course it wins, just because I think Tony B definitely changed the whole squonk game when he came out with this thing. And uh, I told you guys before, but I knew about this project for a very long time, and I was pretty excited about it, even though I'm not big into squonking, but yeah, Tony B definitely changed the game with that one there, and I totally respect him for that. And my next category is sub-ohm tanks. Now, this excludes anything rebuildable. Now we're only talking about the ones with pre-made coils that you just uh, screw in, and we'll talk about the rebuildable stuff in just a second here. But moving on, we have the honorable mention, starting it off with the Inakin Slipstream Tank. Now, I never thought I would be talking about the Inakin Slipstream because I reviewed those a very long time ago at the beginning of this year and at the end of last year. So with that, I never really thought I would be talking about them as far as a best of kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I really think it's a good little tank. I put those coils through hell and they definitely performed and kept up with me. So I'm really happy to announce that uh, that little slipstream tank is going to be great for anybody of any skill level. If you want a nice little pocket kind of tank and mod setup, then there are plenty of options when it comes to Anakin that come with that, uh, that slipstream tank. But yeah, it just kind of stuck out in my mind, you know, taking a look back at this year. Again, 
I didn't really review too many sub-ohm tanks or coil tanks, uh, but this one definitely stuck out in my mind. My next honorable mention goes to the Watofo Flow Tank. Now, I didn't really like the coils that came with it, but I did not have the opportunity to try the other ones that are available for it. However, when I popped a Medusa Staple Clapton pre-made coil in there, I absolutely loved it. So that kind of turned me around on the idea of using a, a pre-made coil tank, especially one that took uh, basically baby beast coils. I, I really don't enjoy the multiple coil head coils out there. I really just, I don't know, I can't really get into it. I like something basic and simple with uh, a single kind of barrel design. I prefer that heavily over anything with multiple coil heads just because I feel like those tanks, uh, those coils rather, tend to dry out a lot quicker. But we're not talking technical stuff here. We're just going to mention my favorite stuff. Anyways, the winner of the sub ohm tank category is the Vapresso Cascade. I've been testing this thing out for the past few weeks and I have been really, really digging this thing. I saw this first at Vape Showcase in Dallas. My buddy Michael over at Vapresso pulled me over to the uh, booth and he had to show me this thing. I was really, really intrigued by it and I'm glad to say when I finally got my hands on one, um, I have been really, really enjoying it. Of course, you'll be seeing the review pretty soon on the channel, but with that, I can tell you already the performance is stellar. Uh, the vapor production is great. The airflow is good. The uh, smoothness of it is a nice smooth airflow and seven mil juice capacity. Next up, we have the best rebuildable tank. Now, this was a tough category. I've taken a look at a lot of rebuildable tanks this year, and there were a lot of good ones as well, so it was really tough for me to even narrow down the honorable mentions with this one here. However, a few that stick out in my mind, uh, first honorable mention goes to the Vandy Vape Triple 28. Now, it was pretty much a coin toss between this one and the actual winner. Um, so it was really tough for me to actually put this one in the honorable mentions. However, it is a stellar, outstanding tank in my opinion. I really love just the sheer size and bulk of it. It fits nicely on the uh, iJoy Captain 270 here. Uh, I really like the bigger style. I never was really into the bigger RDAs or bigger tanks or anything like that, but I'm starting to get into that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people rocking the dump tanks and the bigger 30, 40 millimeter tanks, and I, I kind of like it, I'll be honest with you guys, but uh, the Triple 28 with three coils in there is absolutely a rip-roaring device, and I really think it's worth a try. So there's that one. Uh, next honorable mention goes to something I reviewed really recently, which was the Tiger Tech Mermaid. Um, again, I reviewed a lot of tanks this year and I kind of was scrolling through my old videos and just kind of looking at them again. And I, I thought to myself, you know what, this one really does stand out because it's so easy. It's so easy to build, it's so easy to wick. It's just a good solid tank. Styling on it is nice and I really like the wideboard tip. So yeah, I'm happy to say that the, uh, the mermaid tank is really worth a mention in this little best of uh, vlog here, just because I, it was a really good testing uh, period for me and uh, I really enjoyed that one. Moving on to the winner. The winner is the Vandy Vape Kylan. Again, a coin toss between the Triple 28 and the Kylan, but honestly the Kylan is just ever so slightly better in my opinion as far as just all around goodness. It's just such a good tank. It's so solid. Uh, you can fit multiple coils in there. Uh, I've seen people do some pretty crazy builds, in fact. It's super duper easy to build. The airflow is smooth and there's a lot of it. And uh, you can even put pretty much your basic dripper build. If you, if you guys out there are a dripper, if you love your RDAs and you want just a tank for sheer convenience, then get the Kylan. Do yourself a favor and get a Kylan because you're going to get similar performance as far as airflow is concerned. It's a, a nice smooth airflow as well and just uh, you get really good flavor. But uh, as far as just everything all around goodness, I really would have to pick the Kylan for this one. I just love that tank, man. I'm going to continue using it for a long time. I really like it and I will continue to recommend it as well. 
So this next category is kind of a late addition to this list here, just because I was looking through my old videos and saying, okay, well, I want to talk about that one, but it doesn't really fit in that category. So this is the best mouth to lung tank. And this is going to include not only rebuildables, but also coil tanks all in one category here. But with that, some honorable mentions, starting off with the Vandy Vape Berserker. Now, again, this was a very tough decision. I know there's a lot of debate, you know, this versus this, this versus this. I feel like the Berserker was a nice, solid little tank. As far as styling and looks goes, eh, it could use some improvement, but at the end of the day, obviously, performance is not affected by looks whatsoever. I feel like uh, it's a nice tank. It does a good job at what it is good at, which is, you know, cutting off the airflow tight enough to get a good, solid mouth to lung pull off of it. Um, but yeah, I think it deserves to be on this list just for those reasons alone. Uh, moving on, we have the Inakin Prism Tank. Now, this is a kind of a random one because uh, I didn't expect to put, include this on this list here, but the Prism is the one that comes on the Easy Wah and the T20 and the T20S. Uh, they did a good job with that one. It's not the, you know, most technologically advanced tank. It, uh, it's just pretty basic, honestly. But at the end of the day, as far as a beginner mouth to lung tank goes, this one is it. It comes with, you know, uh, on top of some of the best starter kits on the market, which we'll talk about in a separate category. But uh, yeah, the Prism tank really stands out in my mind. I think they did a good job with it and it definitely deserves a mention in this video. And the winner for the best mouth mouth to lung tank is the Inakin Ares. And uh, I haven't reviewed this one yet. I have been testing it out for a couple of weeks and I'm really excited to do the video on it because I am absolutely loving this thing. Um, the Ares has one of the best airflow control systems I've seen for a mouth to lung tank. I think Phil and Demi did a hell of a job with this one here. And I know there's a lot of controversy over this one and you know, some people don't like it. Some people love it. And I'm kind of like, I'm like three quarters of the way there to loving it. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more time as far as the testing phase goes, but I really feel like this is definitely the top of my list for best mouth to lung device of this year. So speaking of starter kits, our next category is the best starter kit of 2017. Now, originally I had this lumped in with the pod systems, but I felt like there was enough pod systems and enough starter kits to talk about to separate them off into more categories here. So as far as the best starter kit of 2017 goes, my honorable mentions are the Inakin Pebble. I really love this kit. We already talked about the slipstream tank that comes on top of it. It's just such a good little device. I mean, I put this one, I should make this kind of the Inakin Pebble slash the uh, Cool Fire Ace because those two devices are just fan freaking tastic for anyone that wants a simple little pocket device. Batteries on it are good. The you know usability is just super easy and it's just a nice little device. It's super cheap. You get a nice draw off of it. The tank and the like I mentioned is really good and uh, I definitely put that on the list as far as one of the best of the year. Uh, next one I have to mention would be the eLeaf iJust Next Gen. Um, I really like this system. I really like testing it out. I used it quite a bit uh, while I was testing it for the review. Definitely one of the best starter kits of the year. Um, it's just a good kit. And the winner for the best starter kit of 2017 is the Inakin T20 series. Now, I really can't make a distinction between the T20 and the T20S. I feel like they have their own place in the market here. Uh, I really like the T20 because it has the cap. And as I mentioned in the review, the cap is going to be good for people with dirty jobs. You know, if you don't want to get crap inside your drip tip or down inside the coil, that's going to be so invaluable to you. You guys will need that, really. I've had so many people People uh, ask me if they make actual toppers for tanks and stuff like that. And uh, I really think that that was, uh, was a good idea as far as uh, the design department at Inakin goes. The T20S, they got rid of that feature. However, they improved on the tank a little bit. Uh, the Prism tank is just a fantastic little mouth to lung tank for beginners. It, uh, it actually gives you quite a good puff for the resistance coils that you can get for it. Um, personally, I like the one plus ohm coil 
coils. I prefer those over any sub-ohm prism coils, but hey, that's just me. Uh, I use my T20S with Nick Salts in it, and um, I think it's a great little system. Um, it's just a good, easy-to-use starter kit for anyone, and it's cheap enough where you can give them away, basically. I mean, they're so cheap nowadays that uh, you could probably pick up a couple extras just to have on hand and uh, give them to your smoker friends or something like that, try to convert them over to vaping. So my next category is something that I use on a daily basis. This is the pod system category. Best pod systems of 2017. I've tried out quite a few this year. Um, obviously, my most popular video of this year was the pod system showdown. And I will be doing a pod system showdown round two at the beginning of 2018. I feel like it's a good way to kick off the year. So I'm going to try to get that out as early as possible, just because a lot of people are looking to quit smoking at that time of year. So with that being said, uh, some honorable mentions for this category. I have to say the Boulder Rock was a fantastic device to use this year. So glad I found it at VCC Tampa, and I even got Grim Green onto one as well. I, I dragged him over to their booth and said, hey, dude, you got to try this thing out because it is fantastic. I love the price point. I love the uh, ease of use. Um, you can accessorize it a little bit with some wood skins and stuff like that. And uh, it's so darn cheap, guys. It's so cheap. You can still find them for around the 10 to 15 dollar mark sometimes up to 20 but still even at that 20 bucks for a whole system with an extra pod and a bottle of juice that is not bad in my opinion that's why it deserves its place on this list here uh, next one we're going to talk about is uh, this guy right here actually the fix i use the fix a lot this year i got it at um I think I got this one at Midwest Vape Expo. No, I got this one at Showcase Atlanta. That's right. I got this one at Vape Showcase in Atlanta, Georgia. This thing has been in my pocket for a good six months. Uh, I carry it around on a pretty much daily or by daily basis. I, I kind of go on and off with the actual winner of this one, which is the Jewel. Yeah, the Jewel is definitely my favorite pod system of this year. It's just good, man. It just works, and I absolutely love it. Um, the flavors are superior, in my opinion. Uh, the one thing, the one detracting factor of the fix was the fact that I'm not huge on the flavors. I mean, the cool melon pods are really good if and when you can find them, but as far as the Jewel is concerned, nothing can even hold a candle to the Jewel mint pods. And I just recently got in the Cool Cucumber Classic Menthol and Classic Tobacco, so you'll be seeing a Jewel flavor review up on the channel in the very near future. So stay tuned for that as well, but yeah, the Jewel Man, this thing is so good. I just recently bought myself two of the V3 batteries, and I've got the Hydra personal charging case to take a look at for a review as well. So be on the lookout for that as well. But uh, yeah, this thing lives in my pocket. I literally do not ever like leave home without it. Uh, I, even if I'm carrying around my Fix or my Soren Air or any of my other pod systems, I'll have the Jewel and something else. So that's why it wins for me. So moving on to our final hardware category, we have the best RDA of the year. Now, this again is just uh, the stuff that I took a look at. I don't own half of the RDAs that are out on the market nowadays, so please forgive me if I don't mention your favorite RDA. I know this is going to be a little bit controversial, but I'm just going off of what I got in this year, what I reviewed this year, and what I bought this year. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, this list was really difficult. Uh, really, 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 really difficult to judge. There's so many to mention here. Um, you know, it's always, I feel like you're always going to hurt someone's feelings, uh, especially since I'm friends with a lot of the people that came out with RDAs this year. Um, but yeah, I do have a couple to mention. Uh, my first honorable mention is the Drop RDA. I really love the Drop. I'm not going to lie, you guys. I love the Drop. Uh, I know it's very heavily compared to the um, Dead Rabbit RDA. I don't own a Dead Rabbit. I've used it a couple of times. My friends have them and that kind of thing. But I don't own one myself. I'm still kind of... Uh, thinking about buying one. But with that, I think the drop definitely deserves its place 
on this list because it's just good. It's so, so simple to build. There's so many building options with it. The airflow, in my opinion, is really, really nice, very smooth. I get a, a really good draw off of it. Uh, it's great for squonking, and it's just a good little RDA. I mean, it's really good. <laughs> what can I say? Um, you'll be seeing the review of that very soon. I know it's coming very close uh, to the top of the list as far as the uh, two review Q Tuesday goes, but I feel like I might actually get to it sooner than I thought. So with that, um, yeah, it'll probably be fast-tracked in the next couple of weeks or so. Moving on to my next honorable mention, we have the Armageddon Manufacturing Elite V2. I really feel like it definitely deserves its place on this list. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what about the Apocalypse? Personally, I like the Elite V2 a little bit more. Uh, it's just more my thing. I, I Like I said earlier, I'm kind of starting to like the bigger devices out there, and this one definitely takes a cake in the RDA department as far as the ones that I looked at this year. Uh, but yeah, the Elite V2 is just a big, honking, solid piece of kit. You can fit massive builds in there. You can do really crazy stuff with coils. And I look forward to doing many more Fresh Build Friday videos on it just because it's super duper easy to build as well. And it's pretty. I like that it's pretty. I love the engravings. It's kind of my style. And uh, I just like the looks of it and the function. So moving on, we have the winner of the best RDA, in my opinion, of 2017. I'm going to pick the Recoil Rebel, and uh, mainly because of how far it's come. Uh, coming from the first version to the Recoil Rebel, they improved so many things that I did not like about the original Recoil. It's just all around better, and I think they made steps, leaps, and bounds, you know, massive jumps ahead of a lot of the other RDAs on the market nowadays, and it's only going to get better. Um, I, I absolutely love the performance with the uh, wideboard dock tip that I got for it. I think that definitely improves not only the aesthetics, but also performance. I, I definitely prefer that over the original tip, and it fits better too. So that was kind of one of my complaints, is that the tip was kind of wobbly on it. Uh, the dock tip here, no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, but comparing it to the original, it's just so much better. Uh, more airflow, more adjustable, uh, more adjustability for it, uh, the airflow. Uh, you still get the snake bite cap, which is still my preferred cap. Um, the looks of it is fantastic. The very subtle yet effective engravings and that little engraving, that double recoil or double R logo on the deck is such a nice touch. Um, you know, a few minor complaints about it, but that's about it, you know. I still think uh, it was my favorite one to use. I'm using it right now, and I will continue to use this long into the future. Um, but yeah, th this was just one of my favorites of all time, not to mention this year, but just one of my favorite RDAs to use day in, day out. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'll continue to use this one for a long time. Right, so moving on, I have a special segment here called the You Tried Awards, and these are products that were less than great to test out and review and use this year. Um, I have a few products to mention, and I'm not trying to, you know, really get down on these companies or anything like that, but uh, there's a lot of room for improvement here. Starting off with my first one, the Wismec Exo. Ugh. Man, um, honestly, I got this one in, I used it for about a week or so, and then I started seeing all of the stories about people having battery issues, venting batteries, melting mods, just really terrible, awful stuff as far as not only quality control, but also just safety. I mean, I'm looking out for you guys out there, and I decided I was not going to review that one whatsoever, just because... I don't want anyone even going against my recommendation and buying one anyways just because, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a safe device. I don't think it was a good idea. Not to mention the fact that it's pretty darn ugly and uh, what were they thinking? I mean, honestly, what were they thinking? I, I think that was a terrible decision on their part and I feel like they kind of uh, felt the sting after that one. But uh, moving on, we have my next one, which is the Stentorian Vapor AT7. Now, honestly... As far as function-wise, it's not a terrible device. It still does the job, and, you know, for a self-regulating device, it's not bad. However, 
they just, I, I really had a problem with the marketing aspect of it. They really wanted you to think that it was water cooled, even though in, you know, the parentheses and the small text and the little, you know, right below it says water cooled inspired. So yeah, I didn't like the advertising and marketing as far as that one is concerned. It's still kind of a, a desk ornament for me. Um, occasionally I'll just kind of plug it in just to see the little glow and that's kind of cool, but uh, <laughs> it's one of those ones where you're like, you got it in your hand and you're just like, what the hell is this? This thing is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. What were they thinking? Well, you tried. Anyways, um, moving forward here, we have the Vampor Amphisbena RDA. Ooh, did not like this one at all. Uh, it was a lot of little design flaws. Uh, the mouthpiece was kind of interesting. I did kind of like that, but I uh, didn't like the Ultem. I wish it was Delrin. Uh, but yeah, the just overall design factor of it, they tried to do like a bottom ramp style airflow and, you know, they were trying to innovate, but it just wasn't working for them. Just just wasn't working for them. And uh, you, you got to give them a little bit of credit for trying, especially a new company in this market. It's it's really tough, but there's a lot of room for improvement on that one. I hope they continue to, to make RDAs and, you know, maybe I'll take a look at them uh, for the channel. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm glad that one's in my past. But um, continuing on here, we have huh, some somewhat controversial one, I suppose, a Vandy Vape product, uh, the Vandy Vape Mesh RDA. Oh, Mesh, what can I say? Kind of gimmicky, kind of trendy, probably not going to last, but it's an interesting concept and I, I guess I would like to see them develop it a little bit more if the technology improves. I want to see a little bit better technology come out for Mesh. Um, it's it's starting to get there right now and, you know, since the trend, I, I call it a trend, uh, started a few months back, probably what? Mm, six six to eight months back or so, uh, they have improved slightly, but it's still not quite there yet. And uh, the Mesh RDA for me was just not good. I mean, it's fun to mess around with. It's fun to, you know, play with. But at the end of the day, it's not a good functioning RDA. I'm going to try it once more uh, on a Squonk mod just because I want to see that performance because I feel like that is the... Uh, best possible scenario for that device. And if it performs well on a Squonk mod, then it might get the uh, the kind of okay from me, but at the end of the day, still kind of gimmicky. And the last one on the You Tried Awards list is the Aeor Life Inken, a product I recently took a look at. It was sitting in my drawer for a very long time. I feel kind of bad for the company about this one because I've had it for a few months now and it just kind of kept getting bumped down in the queue. Uh, what can I say? It's a product that you can't buy. Um, good luck if you wanted one of those things for yourself, because uh, from what I've heard, that thing is impossible to find. You can really only get it through the manufacturer and it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So as far as I'm concerned, do yourself a favor and just kind of skip over that one. Uh, I will say one good thing about the Incan is the flavor. I mentioned it in my review. The flavor is good. The airflow is decent on it. But other than that, it just fails on a massive level. Um, again, it's a company that I, I do want to kind of support and just go, hey, continue on. You know, you're doing something. Just keep going with it. Expand on it. Hopefully they get onto some of the bigger distributors like GearBest or 3F Vape or Fast Tech or something like that. You know, hopefully they get uh, their products sold somewhere online because then at least you guys could try them out for yourself and prove me wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, that one, uh, yeah, um, I, I don't regret looking at it for the channel. But at the end of the day, uh, I really wish I, I could at least give you guys something if you did want to try it. So... Uh, yeah, it's A Your Life Inkin, the product that you can't buy. So my final category here is not ranked in any sort of order whatsoever, but it's the flavors that I've been vaping most this year. I just wanted to share with you guys what I like to vape. Uh, I mean, obviously flavor is super duper subjective and everyone's going to be different, but these flavors stick out in my mind as far as some of my all-time favorites and especially my favorites of this year, stuff that I vape 
all day, every day, my all day vapes. And um, obviously I'm going to exclude my own line here just because I want to give some credit to other people out there and I don't want to toot my own horn too much. My first one is Cali Vapors Devil's Punch Bowl. I got this one early on in the year. Uh, it might have even been last year, but uh, I vaped most of it this year. I actually go out and buy this stuff myself because it's that good. Um, I got it originally from uh, Steamline Distro. They carry them and I got a care package from them and that's where I discovered this stuff but ever since then I've been just buying it from my shelves at the uh, the shop here but uh, Devil's Punch Bowl is a peach guava pear juice and it is freaking refreshing it's tasty I love peach you guys know that by now and as far as I'm concerned it is an easily an all-day vape for me and best of it doesn't kill your coils so yeah that definitely earns a few extra bonus points there my next juice that I have to talk about is something that I vape all the time and it's something that lives in my bag uh, it's juice guys Arcadia this one is a lemon berry jawbreaker flavor and wow I I was never a huge fan of lemon until this one came out. Um, it's a, a candy-ish flavor that does not kill your coils. Again, that's a big factor for me, is uh, not containing a ton of sweetener. Obviously, everyone loves the sweet juices, but who likes changing out their coils every two days and spending their money and or re-wicking? So, as far as I'm concerned, a lemon berry jawbreaker that doesn't kill coils is A-OK -okay for me. And uh, yeah, I vape this one all the time. I even use it as a basis of comparison for different tanks if I'm trying different tanks or setups out, I will vape that one in a couple different tanks at once just to kind of get a basis of comparison. That's how much I vape this stuff. Next one I have to talk about is Independent Vapor Company's Nillionaire, especially their super steeped one. Uh, wow. Can I just say wow? Uh, steeping liquid. Obviously, everyone knows steeping liquid makes it better. So why not just buy a pre-steeped bottle? This stuff is pre-steeped for six months and just does a world of a difference. It's a kind of a rainbow sherbet flavor and you get exactly as it sounds. You get a raspberry flavor, you get a kind of an orangey citrus flavor, you get a lime flavor, and it just kind of combines all in one with that kind of creamy sort of back note of the sherbet base and Wow, so, so good. Such a rich flavor for being a, a sweet kind of fruity one with a lot of light flavor notes in there. It is really rich and that's what I absolutely love about it. Um, make sure you guys go check that one out. Next up is uh, actually one of my fellow reviewers on here on YouTube, Ruby Roos Juice. Uh, this one's by Lane Cove and it is Nola. I went through Nola so fast. I have never gone through a bottle so fast. Probably about a day and a half, two days, I went through a 60 mil of Nola. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting some more of that stuff. Uh, her other flavors are really good as well. I do recommend you guys try out her line if you haven't already. Just because she's got a bunch of kind of off the wall sort of flavors, something you don't really see every day, like, you know, the black currant, or uh, she's got the, oh, I'm gonna screw this up, coconut and almond, I wanna say. That one's really tasty as well. But uh, Ruby Roo has done uh, some amazing things with her line, and I really do recommend you guys try them out. Uh, so uh, that brings us to my next one. It's uh, something that I started vaping recently, and it is Cyquid Smeech. Smeech is a peach mango smoothie. It's fantastic. I don't know what it is exactly. I'm vaping it right now in the uh, the old Cascade tank, and I don't know what it is really that draws me into this one. I mean, obviously besides the peach, but uh, it has like this little bit of like a, a spiciness or something. I can't really put my finger on it, but it's just the way it's blended, and it's a very natural and ripe peach. It's a very natural and ripe mango flavor. It's a very intense flavor. It just attacks your taste buds in, in such a good way, and um, I cannot get enough of this stuff, and I will be vaping the hell out of it for a very long time. I, I even said it in one video where I said it, uh, a couple weeks ago, it kind of jumped up to almost the top of my list as far as peach flavors are concerned. So that is definitely an accomplishment there. So well done, Chris, uh, Mr. Cyquid, uh, for doing that. But yeah. And the last one I had to mention was um, uh, another company. I'm uh, good friends with the owner, uh, Chris. 
Mayhem Vapor Sunshine. I got to try this at Vape Showcase in Dallas. He uh, just threw me a bottle of this one. I went up to the booth originally for um, the other one that he had, the, uh, the like tropical kind of fruit flavor uh, that I can't remember the name of. I'm going to kick myself for not remembering that one. But that's how much this one just kind of outshines it. It's called Sunshine, and it's a tropical fruit custard. Wow. <laughs> I never thought I'd like a tropical fruit custard. It sounds weird when you say it, but a fruit custard uh, with mango, pineapple kind of notes, it's just delicious. It goes super good with coffee too, and that is never something I would have expected. I actually was like drinking my coffee at the show, and I was vaping on that one. I'm like, this pairs really nicely. <laughs> so that is something that's like really off the wall and just weird, but at the end of the day, uh, if you close your eyes and you pair something up and it just works, then you're winning. So real quick before we go, I do have some shout outs to give as well. And this was not something I've really planned. This was not in my vlog notes or anything like that, but just watching all of these other best of videos, I really had to give some credit where credit's due and just kind of show some love for the people that supported me and that I met this year and just uh, had a lot of fun with at conventions and whatnot. All right, so let's start it off with the YouTubers because I know how difficult this job can be. And I call it a job because it's basically a job that you don't get paid for. I mean, personally, I do five videos a week recently and I put in probably a good... 20 to 30 hours a week easily uh, on just doing my YouTube channel and I don't end up making any money for it. So uh, I know how difficult this can be. So I have to show some love for my fellow YouTubers. Starting off today with Chris from Empire Vape Co. He is an amazing YouTuber. He's a very talented vlogger. His vlogs are freaking hilarious. I die laughing every time I watch one. Super funny guy, very, you know, kind and lovable and uh, love that dude to death. He's a co-host on the super awesome vape show just an awesome dude to uh just chat with and everything so got to show some love for him uh we've got jay from live vape and chill also on youtube another sabs co-host big love for him because he's got a huge massive heart and you know he may be uh, a tough bulldog exterior but he's got a, a heart of a little puppy dog he's just an awesome guy uh, i love him to death and he's also a blast uh he actually can freestyle uh it, <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying this, but he can freestyle and I've heard it and it's pretty darn good. So got to show some love for him as well. Next up, we have Sir Vaping Lot, a.k.a. Vinny, uh, hard worker, really good vlogger, really good YouTuber. I mean, as far as his travel vlogs goes, uh, pff, probably the best in the business, hands down. I mean, he records himself every single second of the day and he puts in the work to actually edit and upload the same day so people get almost a live experience which is really really cool um he's just an awesome guy he's got another another one with a big heart as well uh he wouldn't hurt a fly and you gotta love him for that uh, next, we have Mike's Mex Reviews. Uh, he's another great guy. You know, I say this, I'm going to be gushing a lot. And, uh, you know, he's just a great guy. You know, he is a hard worker. He just started his YouTube channel and he's working really hard at getting better, doing videos, trying to learn everything, learn the ropes and everything. Uh, again, another uh, Super Awesome Vape Show co-host of mine. Um, just, yeah, he, he's always willing to give advice. He will go the extra mile. He will, you know, give something to you and he doesn't ask for anything in return. So, uh, Mike got to show some love for that dude. Next up is Dean, the devil vapor. Uh, he's great. Me and him made instant friends. We met at the London vape show, uh, the vape finder, London vape show, uh, back in August. And we made instant friends like him and I, I just walked into the show and him and I were friends immediately. You know, I met him and that was it. I said, hey man, I've, I've been watching your videos. I'm getting ready for, you know, coming over here. I've been watching your videos. So I feel like I know you already. And we just palled around the rest of the day and we spent uh, that night hanging out at the, uh, the Great British Beer Festival, which was just epic, man. That was absolutely epic. So gotta show some love for Dean, another talented reviewer. Uh, I can't even express how cool of a guy he is. Um, and I love his accent, so there you go. Uh, next up we have, uh, I gotta show some love for Demo Vapes. Demo I met back in ooh, uh, in Tampa. I forget what month that was in, but uh, we met at Tampa VCC. 
very quick friends. Uh, we talked for hours and hours and hours at the little uh, reviewers kind of booth thing. And that was back before he even started his channel. And I've seen that dude grow so insanely fast. He's already over, I think over a thousand subs or getting pretty damn, damn close to it. So gotta show some love for his hard work and dedication. Uh, Demo Vapes, man, he's a great reviewer. I think he has a, a promising future in this, this little uh, gig here, but uh, he's just a great guy all around. Another person I've got to show some love for is Tommy from Vape Finder. Uh, when I went over there in August, he basically just took me under his wing and was like, okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. And he helped me out and you know, he offered to pay for a bunch of stuff. He helped me out with my travel expenses and put me up in a hotel and everything. So gotta show some mad love and respect for that guy. And uh, yeah, I really can't wait for the next London Vape Show as well. And uh, you know, also the rest of the Vape Finder crew, I mean, all those guys are just super cool. Uh, Tommy just makes me feel so at home uh, when I'm with him, you know, he's just like trying to help me fit in. And that's just something that I really re love and respect about that guy but um, yeah uh, the whole vape finder crew the whole uh, vape finder reviewers family as well I mean those guys are all amazing people you should always go check out the vape finder reviewers on YouTube uh, because it's a good crew of guys we've got a lot of people uh, under the vape finder umbrella here when it comes to uh, reviewers and they are really all worth a look I, I am entertained I laugh I'm educated and just everyone is super knowledgeable and super helpful helpful and uh, definitely entertaining. So got to show some love for the Vape Finder family there. So the last couple I'm going to make really, really quick because I know I'm going on and on here, but Chris Lumpson from Mayhem Vapor always just hands me a bottle of juice whenever I walk up to him at a convention and just gives me a big old smile. So love that dude to death. Absolutely a great guy. Uh, Mike and Mac from Juice Guys Distro, pretty much the same situation. They are a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, I really look forward to uh, chilling with them at Vape Showcase in St. Louis and uh, just awesome guys who make awesome juice as well. Mike from Vape Mats definitely deserves a shout out. He's the one that makes me all of these lovely glorious mats that you see in all my videos and he is a extremely hard worker. He works himself to death and he just opened up a shop as well so seriously Mike you need to chill out take a vacation every now and then bud but uh, yeah definitely a great guy there as well. Got a shout out John and Teddy and everyone over at Craving Vapor just super awesome guys awesome to talk to awesome to hang out with and just kind of uh, chill. They always give me their little uh, vape rags whenever I go over to their booth and I'm like covered in juice. They just hand me a vape rag, no questions asked. So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. My voice is absolutely shot from talking so much. Thank you guys so much for hanging out for this best of 2017 vlog and I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments down there in the box below. Make sure you check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the description. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and as always, vape on.